Well, good afternoon, all you styrene users and abusers. This is George, coming to you with your latest fix from Kitchen Table Scale Models. Uh, with a little bit of a little bit of an update, episode four of What's Cooking at Kitchen Table Scale Models. Um, not a heck of a lot has been cooked. Um, a little bit's cooking, um, and I've shared a little bit. Uh, last month, uh, I, I think I posted my last update at the beginning of July. It's now. Uh, uh, it's now third week of August, uh, so it's been about six weeks. Uh, since then, uh, I was on vacation for two weeks in the in the north woods of Maine. Um, while I was there, I uh, visited my son in New Hampshire, who was only a couple hours away, and um, I posted something um, on Facebook, and I got a note back from Jason Hanscom. He said, "You know, you're only you're only a little more than an hour away from me." You know. Uh, so I had the I had the honor of being hosted at uh, Blue Ox Model Shops um, headquarters, and uh, spent uh, spent a little bit of time in the afternoon with uh, with with Jason Hanscom looking at his uh, shop and his build and uh, builds, and uh, I'll tell you they look uh, they look even better in person than they do online. So uh, Jason is one talented builder. Uh, he what he does with rattle cans is is, is sheer magic um i don't know of many builders that really put the kind of effort into um prepping his paint prepping their bodies for paint like he does and boy the results show uh they're just they're just stellar um fun visit with jason although too brief uh would have loved to have time to go out and grab a beer with him or uh sit down on his deck and had had one but uh I had about a three hour drive when I left his house to get back up over the mountains into Maine. So uh, I decided that wouldn't be a good idea. So anyway, I'm going down a rabbit trail. So what's going on? Um, well, uh, while I was on vacation, uh, I did I did try to prepare a little bit. Um, and I, uh, before I left, I posted a couple of videos, right? Recorded a couple of videos uh, as part of my off the wall series, uh, covering these three cars, uh, the, um, Let's see. Let's get something to point with. Uh, I've done the... Uh, I had the 68 GTO by AMT, a 69 GTX. Also, uh, I think that was an AMT kit. And uh, lastly, an original 64 Pontiac Grand Prix by, uh, by AMT. Um, these are... Uh, the, the GTO and the uh, Grand Prix are fairly recent builds. The GTX, on the other hand, is probably about 25, 30 years old. Uh, it's it survived well. Um, and I, I think, for a lot of reasons, might be the, the best best build I've ever done for, for multiple, multiple reasons. Um, did a lot of detailing on the engine. Um, if you want to see more on any of these builds, uh, a little bit more detail, go and check out uh, one of my off-the-wall videos. Um, so, yeah, that, you know, so that's that's out there. Um, I did kind of accomplish that before I uh, headed up to the woods. Um, let's move these aside. Before uh, before leaving on, uh, on vacation, the weekend before uh, was the weekend of the... Um, of the... Uh, 48 hour group build and uh, I did this little sucker um, this is a uh, Fujimi kit uh, Fujimi uh, Ferrari 206 Dino GT Competizione uh, this was a one off car um, it was a styling exercise done by Pininfarina on the Dino chassis um, and, and you can see so many styling elements from this car that eventually found their way into the to the street Dino, uh, the 246 Dino, which, uh, you know, I happen to think is probably one of the most beautiful cars ever built and maybe even one of the most beautiful Ferraris ever built. Um, it's a gorgeous car. The lines on this car are gorgeous. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, what do you say about it? The paint on this came out absolutely wonderful. Uh, I think I need to try to get all my builds done in 48 hours. I was really happy with this. Uh, this is uh, Gunzi Sangio. Gunzi or 
to me. Uh, anyway, it's a uh, pure yellow uh, lacquer, um, airbrushed, uh, no clear coat. I don't even think I waxed or polished this. I mean, this is just the way it laid down. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, so that's uh, that, that's 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 what happened recently. Um, as far as completions and videos and things, um, got a few builds in process. Uh, not had a lot done, but I do have a little to share. Uh, first up, uh, oh, before I before I get into that, uh, I, I mentioned being on vacation. One of the things I did on vacation, and I'm going to come back and talk about this. One of the things I did while on vacation was uh, took. I did. I wasn't possible for me to take any kind of models along. Um, but I did bring the instructions manual, instruction manual for the Poacher Alfa Romeo 8C 2300 Monza 1931 in one eighth scale. Uh, it's a kit I picked up um, a month or so ago. I, I, I did a brief little short video on it. Um, and since then, I've been spending some time just kind of researching, uh, researching not so much the original car, the car, but. Um, researching building poacher kits because uh folks they're not uh they're not to me that's all i can say um you pretty much have to engineer this kit yourself from what what i'm reading online let me uh let me share something here for you uh okay excuse excuse that digression there um I did spend a lot of time on this manual. If you've not built poacher kits, I just thought I wanted to share this. I mean, um, a beautiful, you know, illustration there. Um, the instruction booklet, this, this, these several pages are different languages. It looks like uh, French, Italy, French, Italian, uh, English, and German. Um, this is the English language page. Uh, what this basically tells you, it does, is explains the hieroglyphics that are used in communicating the instructions. I'm not going to go through this whole book. Uh, I, I, do, I do plan on uh, doing some videos on this thing as I get into it. And I'm, I'm going to come back to this little comment on this at the end. But uh, you can see this is put together mostly with little tiny, tiny screws. Um, a little two millimeter screws uh, and bolts, um, which, you know, seems like, oh, gee, that'd be great to just put together. But what I'm reading online is that um, pretty much every screw hole needs to be drilled and tapped out. Uh, they're not, they're, they're not molded. You know, the tolerance on the molding is, is not good. And if you try to put the screw in without drilling and tapping it, um, you're either going to break the screw or break the plastic, um, which says something about the quality of the screws, I guess. Um, it's just, just an amazing kit. Uh, and I don't want to get into the whole thing now because I, if, if I start getting into this, I, you know, I'm going to spend 20 minutes just talking about this poacher kit. But you can see uh, the the, the, uh, the instructions are done with a combination of uh, the I think the first the first digits are the part number. Second digit is the bag or, you know, container that they come in. And then this little symbol tells you what you do with it. Rather it's, yeah, well, take as long as I'm here, I'll show you. Um, it tells you, you know, these little symbols tell you whether they're screwed, screwed with a screwdriver, screwed with a box wrench, screwed with a wrench, forced with a hammer, I like that. Snap fast and cemented, auto auto adhesive, which I guess is glue, hot squeezed, I'm not sure what that means, and free to rotate. Um, it is going to be fun. Uh, and again, I'm going to just come back and talk about this a little bit at the end when I talk to share what's, what's going to happen. Um, build progress. Let's look at my uh, start with... Start with the uh, Porsche 9, the Ravel Porsche 914 kit that I'm doing for the um, Scale Model Podcast group builds. Um, gotten a, got a little bit done on this this weekend. Again, having, you know, I was away for two weeks and I got home from vacation a week ago yesterday. Um, and um, 
managed to uh, contract a stomach virus, which pretty much had me wiped out for about four days. So, uh, but over the weekend, I kind of, kind of got together a little bit, and um, I got to got to do a little bit of work on the Porsche. I got the, uh, oh, there we go. Um, got the pat, you know, chassis done, the engines, and this is a real simple kit. I mean, there's, it's, it's not, it's, it's just a super, super simple kit. Um, it goes together well, it's just a simple kit. Uh, the only piece I've had a problem with is this, you know, the shift linkage part doesn't quite want to fit, and I, and I can't figure out why that is, because the engine is in properly, but, uh, this, this just doesn't want to just doesn't want to go where it belongs um the uh yeah i mean it's you're not going to see much of the engine when this thing is together because it's tucked way down like it is in the real car uh something i've done with this that i think is kind of fun is is i wanted to do something a little different on the color so you can kind of see in this this is this is not this is not clear coated yet uh my plan in fact is uh, as soon as i finish taping this video is uh or recording this is uh is to throw down the clear coat on this, um, but it's uh, this is a uh, Mr. Color Pearl color. Um, one of the oh, what color is it? Um, not, not Moonstone. Um, yeah, this is. Uh, this is Mr. Crystal Color, which is a Mr. Color Gunzi Sangio product. Uh, this is applied over just straight white primer. I left the body, I, I left the chassis in white primer. Um, I'm building kind of a canyon burner out of this. Progress is, you know, I got back on it this weekend after return, returning from vacation and uh, fun with stomach virus and uh, got some work done. Um, got a couple of neat things planned for this. Going to do something a little, little special with the exhaust. Um, and yeah, so that's, uh, that's kind of, that's kind of the Porsche 914 group build. Um, so that's that. Next up is the, uh, next up and active on the bench is the, uh, or at the table is the 67 GTO, uh, that I'm working on for the, uh, old goat group build by the, uh, again, by the scale model car, uh, Spotify podcast guys. Um. This is a uh, the old goat group build. Um, those of you who watch my channel are going to look at it and go, "Wait a minute, that's the same way it looked like six or eight weeks ago." And you, well, you're right. Uh, I had this thing fully painted. Um, underneath the taped top, it's uh, it's done with um, MCW uh, vinyl top paint, uh, textured vinyl top paint. So that's 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 masked. I just hit this this weekend. I, I, I had to strip it. I, I painted it once, uh, had it all, you know, pretty much ready to go into final assembly. And I dropped, I, I don't know where or how, but I got a big blob of glue on the driver's door. And I just, you know, just decided the heck with it and threw it in the tank and stripped it. Unfortunately, this paint job didn't come out quite as nice as the other ones. I've just, put a couple i've got about three coats four coats of the green on here this is um mr color uh clear green over um their rough gold uh which gives kind of a metal flake look because it's a it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty heavy metallic um which is what i was looking for i was i was going for a green metal flake look uh, i i i remembered uh remember when i was you know, kid in New Jersey in high school, uh, there was a guy running around town in a 65 GTO that was painted this color uh, with a white vinyl top and a white interior, and that's what I'm doing with this kit. Um, so I, I got it got it back into paint. Um, I got to wet sand it and, and get another coat on it, and, you, you know, hopefully I can get some of that crap out of the, out of, off the trunk. Um, you know, I, I didn't notice that when I don't know if that's in the gold. I think it's in the gold. Uh, but in any case, uh, you know, I got some work to do on this. Um, but uh, first and foremost, I got to finish the Porsche build, which is due in about six weeks. Um, 
Last but not least, as far as group builds I'm working on is uh, Blue Ox Model Shop Street Machine Group build. Um, I'm doing a low buck street machine 66 Barracuda. Um, not much done on it since I last put a video up. Um, I do have, uh, I, I have picked up a 3D printed Slant 6 Hyper Pack motor from uh, VCG Resins by Reese. Um, it, it, his products are just absolutely beautiful. Um, I've, I've got a couple Slant 6s. Um, the one that I, uh, I think the first couple, the first one I bought was, uh, was from Texas 3D, but it was 124th scale and really, I mean, I wouldn't even fit in the engine compartment of this thing. And, uh, yeah, I have dogs. They're upstairs barking. Um, this again is going to use, going to be the hyper pack, which, uh, uses the, uh, this big Ram air four barrel manifold. And, uh, yeah, I got a little bit done on it before I went off on vacation. Um, and I'll get back on it once I finish the Porsche. And uh, put that aside. So, uh, again, I said low buck street machine. Um, I might leave this in primer. Uh, I, I keep going back and forth. Do I want do I want to put color on it? Or do I want to really go for the low buck working process? Um teenage kid building his building a building a hot rod out of the car his dad gave him um and, and I'm, I'm really leaning heavy to uh, keeping it in primer if i don't do primer what i will probably do uh the the, the color i thought of using with this is a uh, it's just a light almost a pastel blue uh there was a color like that that i remember that was used on the 60 plummets that was kind of nice um i just I, I painted the interior red thinking it was going to stay with the uh stay with the primer um and i don't know how the red will look with the blue but i you know anything come you know tell, tell me what you think in your comments um primer paint it paint it what color um again keeping in mind with i'm looking at a low buck street machine so we're not gonna it's not it's it, it's basically replicating a car that um mom and dad gave to junior um and uh junior went out immediately and started hot rodding it um so uh yeah so that's it um that, that's that's uh that's work or other work in process um got a couple stash ads um i think uh start with the uh start with the 64 malibu ss um this is a promo kit promo style kit that uh, was just released by uh by round two amt um i i did a little unboxing on this on one of my model cars and coffee episodes um uh, if you want to look at that uh please you know i invite you to go ahead and check that out um uh, you, you can just go to my go to my youtube page which you already are and look at other videos just a couple weeks ago i did this it's a great kit i'm not going to open it now um and then I don't know what in the world possessed me to buy this, but it, it, you know what? I, it's been years since I've done a... I, I've only, only built one of, the, one of these monster kits once when I was a kid, and I think this is the one I built. I, I, it was either this or Dragnut, which I think was actually a pyro kit. But uh, in any case, um, I, you know, I just said, this it just, just looked like something that, you know, if I need a slump buster, if I need something that I can just get together and have something fun to put on the shelf uh, plus I, you know i no model car collection is complete without at least one ed roth monster in it so uh so yeah i picked up these two kits uh i think it's the last uh last month's maryland automotive modelers association meeting um more recently um i just uh just got this one on the mail the other day um uh, it is a uh well, you can see what it is. It's a 58 Chevy Impala. Um, this is a Revell kit. I, I, you know, I passed this kit up, and I, I don't know why. I've passed this up a, a, probably a dozen or more times. 
Uh, until now, the only 58 Chevy kit out there was the uh, the AMT kit, which, uh, you know, it's a nice kit, but if you're familiar with it, you know, it's got its, it's, got its quirks. Um, you know, it was done in, in an era when uh, AMT was trying to copy Ravel and put opening doors and trunks on everything, uh, or at least on the 58 Chevy. And uh, I actually started building that kit, <coughs> excuse me, several years ago. Um, got as far as prepping the body and um, scribing out all of the bare metal, uh, all of the chrome trim for bare metal and all that. And, uh, you know, I was back before I uh, packed everything up and didn't build for 20 years. Um, but I, I got this because I, I do want to do a 58 Chevy. Um, and I'm, I'm not big on, on the low rider, uh, low rider look. Um, it's just, it's just, you know, nothing wrong with it. I just, it's not what floats my boat. Um, I will probably build something closer to this than that. Um, or maybe somewhere in mid between, um, yeah, well, you know, this one's got an opening trunk, too, uh, but at least the doors are shut, so those doors on that uh, AMT kit just fit terribly, so so, uh, so that's stash ads. I want another interesting stash ad. Let me share this with you. Um, you know, one of the things, one of the questions or inquiries I see frequently on the Facebook pages is, you know, what do you use for, you know, if you use, if you lose axle pins, and, uh, or what can you use to replace the metal axles and I did a little research online and I picked up these, uh, yeah, let's do this. I picked up these, I bought these rivets. Um, yeah, where are you? Come on. Yeah. Uh, I bought these rivets. I got this bag of rivets for like six bucks. There's a hundred rivets in here. They're two millimeters, which is slightly more than a 16th of an inch. Um, they're, strong but they're soft enough that they cut easily so you can adjust the length they're also available in different lengths i think these are the i i don't i think these are 18 millimeter 18 millimeter or 10 millimeter i don't know whatever length i ordered um and i you know i haven't used them yet but um i i bought them because i i need to do something with the front axles on that barracuda the original kit was designed to use a, a solid you know the the old the old AMT straight metal axle that went through the bottom of the engine block and uh, well I, I'm not going to drill a hole in my 3D printed engine and uh, so I need something that would uh, I can mount the wheels on without violating the engine and uh, I found these online uh, they just came yesterday I haven't used them yet um, I did order, I, when, I, when I first got them, I thought, you know what, these look a little long for most applications, and I don't know how easy they are going to be, are to cut, and I've already ordered a couple bags of different sizes, uh, again, they're like four or five bucks a bag, and there's a hundred of them, so, you, you know, they'd be great for replacing metal axles, um, I think I got them off of Amazon, um, if I could figure out how to post links, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll post one in a comment or something, um, so that's uh, that's kind of what's been happening. Now what's going to happen? Well, I, you know, I got a couple things going on. Um, stand by. I'll be back. I'm still here. Still here. Okay, got a couple other group builds in the works, or in the planning stages anyway. Um, the uh, Saturday Night Short Track group build being sponsored by, or uh, being, being held by Blue Ox and uh, Scale Model Outlaws. Um, I, 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 I haven't been able to like, make up my mind on what to build on this. I think, you know, originally I was going to do the, uh, I was going to do the little midget racer and then BG at, uh, Brian Brian Gugamos at uh, BG's model workshop um, is just doing such a bang up job on his, and I think you know what I'm going to let. Uh, there's no way in the world I can put anything out that's going to look anywhere near close to that. Um, I'm going to let BG have his have his day in the sun with his build and uh, do something else. Um, I, I I chose this secondly um, 
but when I looked at this kit, I realized a couple of things. I've got, there, there's, a, there's, there's a number of modified kits out there and modified stocker kits that, that you know, meet the Saturday night short track criteria. There we go. Let me move that light so I don't get, you know, I'm getting a lot of shadow and glare. Anyway, uh, there's a lot, there's a lot out there. Uh, a couple different kits out there. This one uses the uh, Tobias style chassis. It's a real finicky chassis. I've already built one of these. Um, I built the, I think, 35 Chevy sedan. Um, it was a fun build. I enjoyed doing it. Um, but I already built it. So I thought I'd want to I'd pick a kit that used a different chassis. And right now, I'm kind of leaning towards towards this one. Um, I always like the 34 Fords. I just like the style of the body. I like the way it... Uh, I just like the way it sits. Um, and, you know, this 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 looks like it's going to be a fun little build. And, and it does have real live dirt track tires. So it's not an asphalt modified. It's a dirt modified. Um, I do have uh, a couple of... 3D printed 460 big block motors from M, uh, MCV products um, that will may replace the kit engine. We'll just have to see what's involved with that. Um, although this does have a quite a nice big block right there. Don't know what I'm going to do with color yet, but right now this this is this is in lead for building it for the. Uh, Saturday Night Short Track group build. Last, well, not really last, uh, other group build coming up is Woody's Scale Model Garage is doing the rock and roll, rock and roll group build. Um, basically, uh, the, the concept is, you know, build, build a car that's featured in a, in, in a rock song, uh, in a rock and roll song. And well, you know, the original rock and roll song arguably is uh, Rocket 88. And, uh, you know, what, Better build in a Rocket 88. Uh, this 50 Olds has some special meaning to me uh, because, uh, as family legend has it, my father brought me, my father and mother brought me home from the hospital in a 50 Oldsmobile. Um, and there's a story behind that, which I'll share at some point. But that's uh, so. I I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do this. Um, what I haven't decided, I do have a, a a fastback, a chopped top. Is it chopped top? I think it is a chopped top. Uh, fastback resin body that goes with this, uh, that, that can go with this kit. I may end up using that. Uh, I haven't quite decided yet uh, if I want to use that on here or just build this as a uh, straight coupe custom. And I do have... Uh, I do have two more of the uh, of the the other fifty Oldsmobile kit, which is more stock. Uh, I don't know if I would swap out that body, but anyway, uh, it, I'm going to do a fifty Oldsmobile. Don't know what I'm going to do with color yet. Last but not least, I said I'd come back to the uh, to the poacher kit. Um, my 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 plan is with the poacher kit is uh, I want to get I want to get the uh, Porsche group build out of the way done. And um, I'm still doing research on on this poacher kit, still planning out my build. But um, my goal is by the end of the year uh, to get started on this and then um, spend uh, at least one weekend or one day a month, um, put everything else aside and work on the alpha um, and slowly but surely finish it. Um, it's a major project. It is a major undertaking, um, and I, you know I've 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 heard it read that if uh, that poacher kits, you know, it's not you're not really building a model kit. They just kind of give you the raw material, and you got to make it work. Um, I don't think it's quite that bad. Um, you know, the the wire wheels uh, are each individually. Each spoke is th is 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 you know is built up individually. Um, there's a lot of aftermarket stuff out there for this kit. I bought some of it, and I think I featured that on one of my uh, one of my uh, model cars and coffee. Um, I've been picking up some reference material online um, on on not just the car, but again on how to build a kit. So uh, you know, as far as uh, you know, what's what's next? Um, 
I'm going to be diving into the poacher, uh, hopefully in the next month or two. Um, probably won't be until October, November. I'm going to be going away for another week in September. Uh, my other hobby, uh, in pursuing my other hobby, which is uh, showing dogs. Uh, my wife, Carol, and I are going to be going to Bowling Green, Kentucky and um, for uh, a national dog show. And while we're there... Um, we're only going to be uh, about five miles from the Corvette Museum, and I am organizing a group tour for uh, my fellow dog show folks um, to do it. Do a group tour of the Corvette Museum, and uh, of course, while I'm there, I'll uh, be taking plenty of pictures and maybe even shoot a little video if they let me. Um, I don't know if they'll allow it, but if they allow it, I will. Um, so uh, that, that's it. That's uh, that's what's cooking. Um, you know, thank you for listening. Uh, Sorry I went on for a half hour, but if you're still with me, um, you know, give me a thumbs up, give me a like, give me a share, give me a subscribe, you know, just, yeah, just do all those good things, um, you know, and thanks for listening, thanks.